Okay, we're in Bisbee, Arizona today. This may be more of a tourist trap than Tombstone itself. It is very crowded. It is Sunday morning and uh, it's. I just went through Tombstone and it was dead compared to here. There's nowhere to even park around here. Okay, we got one antique store. And looks closed though. Hmm. English shopping. Just too crowded. Yeah, this town is a giant town and it's a town that I haven't really tried privy digging in because the houses are built on the sides of mountains basically. So finding the privies is very difficult. So anyway, I am I'm basically going to the town of Douglas. Here's the sign right now. Douglas is so easy to dig. It's perfectly flat. There's about a hundred blocks to dig off of 1904 Sanborn Mountain. So let's go on over there. Okay, we are in a town called Pertleville, which is connected to Douglas. And uh, this is a 1914 map that shows a bunch of places. See, all the ones in circled in red are the places that are actually abandoned. Or bacon lots right now. So here's one right now. So I have been probing and I think I've located a privy. So let's open it up. Okay, here it is. Pretty small dimensions, but I think it'll be a little bit bigger than that. So let's open it up. Okay, the ground is hard and dry as can be, but we're starting to find broken bottles at the one foot level. That's a blown in the mold whiskey flask. I can tell you right now, everything in this town is going to be 1899 to 1919. So don't have to worry about seeing me finding that, finding any 1930s and 40s privies. Lots of glass coming out. Okay, well these people just showed up. And I talked to them and they said it would be okay if I checked their yard out as well. And they also said they and that it would be okay to check that out as well. So I got a whole day set aside for digging these places. Okay, I got one located. It's in a bit of a crowded spot, but I'll have to do my best. And here's a quick way to tell if it's a virgin hole or not. If you see this white stuff mixed in well separated actually then you know it uh, hasn't been dug yet okay the first bottle showed up at the two foot level I just threw it out it's a Gebhard's chili powder a very popular thing in this town it doesn't have the eagle on it because it's too small I guess maybe because it's a little bit too new but I think it's got to be Right around 1920 to 24. Okay, there's the second bottle and it still has the paper label on it. And it is a miniature Florida water bottle. Murray and Landman Druggist, New York. 
that's by far the most common brand of Florida water but you seldom see these small size ones they're usually about four times bigger it's almost worth preserving the label because it's so good but I don't think I'll do that and it's blown in the mold so that's definitely getting older okay we got one coming out it looks like a shoe polish Yeah, it's the ultra common Whitmore Boston USA. And it is miles well, right around 1918 or 1919. Okay, I found another one. It's a machine made. Pretty sure, yeah. It says Nile quality. That's a common brand around here. Okay, I got two of them coming out at the same time. Just a plain split beer, yeah. Red Raven Splits. And this one is broken beer. Well, that's it for this one. It was a lot of work for very few bottles. Hopefully the next one will be better. Okay, I got the first one coming out of this one. Doesn't look too good. Welch's Grape Juice. I think that's probably even later than those other ones. 1925 to 1930 maybe. And there's a plain old shoe polish. Late 20s probably. Okay, we got um, what looks like a Tabasco sauce. Doesn't actually say it on the bottom of it. But it is definitely, well, almost for sure one of those because it looks like one. It's blown in the mold, but no embossing. Well, what can I say? I wish I hadn't gotten permission to dig this yard because they are so sparse and so worthless. These bottles are not worth hardly anything. Mm. So anyway, I finished this one and uh, this was a big waste of time. Okay, I think I found a third hole. It's so hard. The ground is really, really hard and dry right now. But pretty sure it's a hole, but I don't even know if I want to dig it because the last two were so bad. But it's a rare opportunity to dig somebody's property, so let's do it. ground is really hard. It's wearing me out. Here's another kind of color that identifies it as a privy. It's kind of got a green color to it. I am three and a half feet deep and I still haven't found anything. But I think I am just on the verge of hitting some bottles. Well, I was wrong. It was at least another foot. But now I am just finding the first bottle. Well, the top is broken off, but it's a Gordon's London Dry Gin. Can't tell how old it is, but I hmm, it still has part of the label still on it. But this definitely looks much older. I would say this could be 1910, 1908 even. Now I'm five feet deep. I see a bottle. It's kind of dark, but uh, let me see my scratcher and work it out. Okay, it's a broken ketchup. Mm, looks like an early machine made one, so it's probably 1912 or 13. Well, this was a hundred dollars worth of labor for basically nothing. Two broken neck bottles. And it goes five and a half feet deep. Mm, well, the dirt is so hard that I 
misread the edge of the hole, so I dug it about a foot too far over that way, and it went at least a foot under there, so the whole thing was a foot off, and it also goes at least a foot that direction too. So this is one of the rare lots where it was so bad, so sparse, I just can't believe it. But let's go to that other lot. This way you don't have to bend your back. What a sunset. Well, I didn't get to finish that last hole because I got a flat tire and I had to spend the last hour taking care of that. Then there was only a little bit of light left so I didn't feel like driving all the way back there just for 20 minutes of digging. But I'll take care of that in the morning.